Larry Shover, Chief Investment Officer at SFG Alternatives, now joins us live from Chicago. Larry, great to have you with us as always. We're all looking to the next catalyst, I suppose, being that OPEC meeting a little later this month. What do you think the chances are that OPEC members and uh, some of those major oil producing nations will step in and raise their output levels in order to curb any concerns about a, a shortfall in supply? You know, I think uh, it's really good. The prospects are good. Uh, one reason, though, I think we rallied today was that people are starting to realize that even if we reduce OPEC's compliance to 100 percent, you look at the average between February and April, that's only 640,000 barrels a day. I mean, it's a lot, but uh, it might not offset the loss we see from Iran, from Venezuela, and now Angola. So I think that's a, a little bit of a snapback we saw today in WTI. Um, we mentioned the gap there, obviously, continuing between the benchmark Brent index and West Texas Intermediate crude. Are you concerned by that at all? I mean, it's almost at about $10, that gap between the two, two major benchmarks there. Is that somewhat of a concern and, and why? You know, it's not a concern to me yet. Um, another few dollars and yes, it will. It'll be back to where it was perhaps 10 years ago. But um, it's all well founded. Um, the, the U.S. market continues to price in a shale surprise. I don't think they're, they're pricing in enough of it. Um, and on the other hand, you have uh, the, the geopolitical risk and also global, the, global economic data or European data that is stabilizing but has de decelerated from January. So the spread definitely makes sense. Um, these things tend to run a lot wider than uh, most of us can stay for longer than most of us can stay solvent. But um, I do think we'll see a convergence perhaps over the next six to nine months. Uh, let's talk outside of the uh, the energy sector and the oil sector. It's all about tech stocks at the moment. Um, we know that there was that concern back in March yeah. where investors were fleeing out of the tech space because there were concerns about regulation with Facebook facing those questions over its uh, sharing of, of its information. Now tech stocks like look to be a lot more attractive once again with the Nasdaq at these record highs. Why yeah. is that? Yeah. Why are tech stocks looking so attractive at these levels? Yeah, I think it's uh, just that whole safe haven, the rotation. People just really don't know what to do. They feel like uh, the week beginning June 11th is a big one. Um, it actually does worry me, though, um, maybe not the NASDAQ, but technology in general. When you think, you know, the S&P 500 is up 3% on the year, just about. And half of that is Microsoft and Amazon. Um, and the other half is made up of Facebook, Apple, uh, MasterCard, Intel. And finally, uh, what would be the last one? I can't remember now, but um, Netflix. So that said, uh, the thinning leadership does worry me. Uh, liquidity is down. People are going after these big names, these Uber tech stocks, because they, they act more like safe havens right now. And, and as you said, there was people who were out of tech just a few months ago. So how are you positioning? I mean, we talk about that move into safe havens. Gold's been very interesting because it hasn't really got much attention despite all of geopolitical concerns. Uh, gold really hasn't been that safe haven place to be. Are you parking yourself in, in safe haven assets? What's your allocation looking like as we stand? Yeah, I'm pretty much the same as I was before. Neutral on the U.S. because I do believe we're closer to end of cycle than the beginning of cycle. I am very hot in the Eurozone, especially with the small to medium cap stocks. And the banking sector doesn't look great right now, but I do believe it makes a lot of sense. Also overweight in Japan. Um, I think that's a really decent play. Beyond that, um, gold to me is not a safe haven. It's not acting like one, nor will it, because I think rate expectations are different than real expectations. And with that said, we're going to continue to see gold lower. Um, that said, in U.S. terms, if gold does breach 12 an ounce, I would turn and be a buyer. All right. Fantastic. Larry Shover, as always, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you.